our God and our Father, we exhort you for this night. Thank you for aligning us in such a season that you're giving us time to pray at such a gate. So we enter it with praises, but also we possess it with thanksgiving. Lord, we enter a gate of a new season with the God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob as our banner. He is our shield and he is our refuge. Lord, we enter with you in this season. We enter with you at the gate of Susan, and we possess this gate tonight by the blood of Jesus Christ and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Lord, I pray that as we begin to come before your courts, our Heavenly Father, begin to sanctify each one of us. Begin to cleanse each one of us as we are on this call, whoever has logged in. Lord, begin to sanctify us individually in our different homes, such that, Lord, where we are defiled, Lord, you will qualify us to become the living stones. And then, Lord, align each one of us with your Lamb's altar that is before the throne of our God in heaven. So that, Lord, we'll have open heavens tonight as we communicate with you. What I pray you will silence all the moon worshippers whose aim is to disorganize this meeting tonight. I pray that, Lord, you'll frustrate their tokens and frustrate their counsel. And whoever is enchanting against this meeting, whether he's on call or outside the call, Father, I pray that you rebuke them with a rebuke they will never forget. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I pray that you'll open our ears and our hearts. Break down our stiff necks, O oh God, where we have been walking in disobedience. That, Lord, through this night, Heavenly Father, we shall understand the call to obedience. Come to total repentance and agree that, Lord, surely, when you give us pay. So, Father, I pray that you begin to take charge from this moment. You're the word of protection around each one of us on this call. That we shall not have any interference from ancestral demons, from wicked altars of hell, from water spirits, and from all the gates of hell. That, Lord, we shall be protected through this night, uh, through the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. And not by the end of this session, we will give praise and honor to your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Somebody say amen. 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 So my name Amen. is Gilbert Tashovia, and I will be sharing about obedience, the key to conquer. Of course, there you know you have an opposite called disobedience. And today I didn't want to start from the book of Joshua, as it was already announced. We shall come to it later. I want to first put some what they call not before. We used to call it NB. Praise the Lord. And uh, it's a lot of NB, so it's not something small, but we shall come to the book of Joshua a bit later. Uh, when you talk about obedience, for example, we talk about complying with an order. And that means when you hear something like obedience, uh, one, you're talking about commands, uh, instructions. I guess uh, people who have been in the forces, or in police or your PDF, they understand this issue of obedience way, way better. It's just that theirs is 40. Because in the army, you don't ask, you don't question. When you're given a command, you just obey, order, you obey. And uh, it's just that it's a wicked system that Satan brought on earth. But I believe that uh, they had photocopied it from heaven because that's how heaven works. They, heaven works with commands, works with orders, works with instructions, and uh, the work of the subjects is obey. Just that uh, our system is on earth are 40 in every way that you find there is a loophole somewhere, but otherwise it at least has a picture <clears throat> of what obedience is. Now, there are things I want us to understand about obedience before we go into the theme scripture for tonight. One of them is that uh, obedience comes by grace. You, you can't force obedience, you know, that, that's why, uh, because we are born rebellious, naturally every human being, even a child of one year, you see they are struggling, you know, you want to bathe the kid and it is a war. So rebellion is, we are born with it. From birth, we are struggling with rebellion and primarily against God. So uh, when, it, uh, when it adds on with other things, then it becomes worse. That's why when you read Romans chapter 1, verse 5, Romans chapter 1, verse 5, someone can read, someone on call can read, a quick reader. Romans chapter 1, verse 5, so that you don't sleep. Anybody who is quick, Romans chapter 1, verse 5. Okay, it seems you guys don't have Bibles. 
So it says. I'll read. I'll read. Okay. You, Romans 1. You read, verse 5. Through him and for his name's sake, we received grace and apostleship to call people from among all the, the Gentiles to the obedience that comes from faith. To call people to obedience. We received the grace for obedience. That's why some versions say, I think especially in NKJV, it says we, we were given grace and apostleship for obedience to faith. That's why it is very important to understand that the, unless God gives you grace to obey, and uh, that's why it is very dangerous to be proud that when you obey, you, you know how to obey God and you, you when you meet other Christians, you despise them, that for them they are struggling with obedience. But in actual sense, you are given a certain level of grace to obey because naturally we are all rebellious. And that's one of the things I want you to pray for tonight, that God will give you grace to obey. Because I know the poor are struggling with the issue of disobedience. They want to obey, but they can't. So tonight I pray that you will not that down and ask us when, when you come to the time of prayer, that the Lord will lead you to pray that he will give you grace for obedience. Point number two is that uh, obedience can be learned. That's in Hebrews chapter 5, verse 8. Another person can read for us Hebrews chapter 5, verse 8. Hebrews 5, verse 8. Okay. Read. Read, okay, uh, you read. Hebrews 5, 8 says, uh, though he was a son, Yet he learned mm -hmm. obedience by the things which he suffered. Though he was a son, thank you. Of course, they are talking about Christ. That though he was a son, he also learned obedience by the things he suffered. There are things we go through, friends, that will teach you obedience. And that's one of the prayers I want you to pray tonight. That God will give you experiences that will teach you how to obey, that will make it easier for you to learn how to obey. Because it can be learned, and that means God can teach you how to obey through experiences, whether hard or simple. But I pray that tonight you'll pray that prayer that God will teach you how to obey, or He will teach you obedience. Then another point I wanted to point out before we go to the book of Joshua is that uh, obedience needs hearing well. When you go to the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, it's a book that most people normally read. That chapter, but there is one verse I want us to focus on. Verse one: To obey, you must have heard well, and that's why it is very important. Let me read for you verse one. It is now it shall come to pass if you diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God to observe carefully all His commands, all His commandments which I command you today, that the Lord your God will set you high above all nations of the earth and all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you and be, because you obey the voice of the Lord your God. Now, most of us normally love reading the blessings, but we don't want to see the actual way, how they come. The scripture says that if you diligently obey the voice, meaning if you don't hear the voice, you cannot obey. That is why obedience comes by hearing well. Now, uh, most people who disobey is not necessarily because they want, but sometimes they say, ah, Maybe it is my mind. Maybe it is the devil's voice. Maybe he's a false prophet. Maybe someone can come and give you a word that requires obedience. That is from the Lord and say, ah, maybe this guy is a false prophet. So you begin to debate simply because you do not hear well. But when you have heard well, it is very easy to obey. So my friends, I pray that tonight you will ask God to give you the grace to hear well. So that when he speaks, you don't wake up and say, hey, maybe this is my mind. Maybe... Uh, it's just my heart. Or maybe this uh, ancestral demon is talking. So that when you have heard well, your obedience will come with ease. That's one other thing that is very important in obedience. Another thing that is quite, quite very important in obedience is faith. You need much faith to obey. Why? Because most of the things which God will tell you to obey, most of the instructions God will give, especially on the personal level, usually they are not small projects. Let me give an example. Of course, we know we're going to look at Caleb later, but there are things God cannot tell you. He cannot instruct you to wake up and take breakfast. Because if you don't take it, you'll just die if you don't eat. But there are things by them God speaks to you. He knows in the nature you cannot pick it. You cannot know what to do about it. And it's a, maybe an obstacle. It's something very big. 
wait, can even take your life if you don't know uh, or respond. And so by the time God tells you, do this or don't do this, it means if God didn't tell you, you would never do the right thing. So that's why it's very important that you would trust him, even when it doesn't make sense to you. That's why they call faith. You, that's why in the end they don't reason. When they give you an order, go and kill someone, so you don't ask what has he done. He's an innocent civilian. You just go and kill, and you come back and give a report, mission accomplished. Praise the Lord. That's why you need so much faith to obey God especially. Because by the time God moves out of his throne to tell you something out of 7 billion people on this earth, then surely that thing he has told you is very important to him. That's why you must walk in so much faith and say, if I am going to die on this mission, let me die on it, but at least I will die while trying to obey the living God. That's why even when you have heard wrongly and you are trying to obey God, usually God will correct you before you make a mistake because in your heart, he sees that you are pure and you're doing it for his name. That's why it is important not to hesitate when you have heard God, but move by faith and much faith, not just small faith. Something else that is very important about faith is that faith is very progressive. God will not wake up one day and tell you uh, uh, something that is too big for you. He will begin uh, telling you small things. You progressively grow as you grow, especially it begins to give you harder instructions or something like that. And it, it, of course, you can't settle. Hey, for me, the time when God spoke to me, I went and did it. So this time, he will give you something harder. That's why it is very important to do the small things. Well, if God tells you, start waking up at 6 and watch maybe that gate, uh, 6 a.m. Yes, of course, in the morning, but he says, watch it. But of course, you say, but I say, I have children, I have to drop them to school. You know, for me, you know, I, I, I work up later, you know. You begin to give him reasons. That is, it looks like a small disobedience. You say, let me, I will pray when I reach office, all the prayer at 7, you know. But for him, he has said 6. He has his reason. So you need to obey God in those small, if he says, maybe, for example, um, stop watching TV at home, like stop exposing your children to TV. Of course, the children probably will rebel in the first way, make noise, make case in the house. And then you will say, eh, ah, in order for me to remain friends with my children, let me now, God, you will forgive me. So nobody, nobody say that God will understand, but let me tell you when it comes to God's commandments, God does not understand. When he has given an instruction or an order, friends, it is very important whether it looks small or big, please, the best you can ask is the strength to do it. But the questioning of it, it doesn't work. So understand that obedience is progressive. So you grow in it. It doesn't just, it doesn't just give you one big order and then it disappears for the next 50 years and then it comes and throws another one. No, God grows us up and he teaches us how to obey. So very important, obey in small things. And uh, I know in this context, there are some of you have, there are some things you know God told you as an individual, as a mother, as a father, maybe five years ago, two years ago, but you have been ignoring them because they look too small. They look, they are not heavy to you. You are waiting for him to give you, but he, he will not give you the big one unless you have obeyed in these small things. And that's what will teach you obedience because for him, this is the danger of what he's warning you about or what he's telling you to do. But also remember, we're talking about obedience, the key to conquer. That's why when, the, unless you obey certain instructions, there are some territories you'll never conquer. That's why we are not saying that it is a key to victory because victories can happen even when without, without obedience. God can give victories to the wicked and to the righteous and to ever. But by then, God wants you to inherit something, to own something. You see, when we go and fight maybe with Kenya and we win, we, we, we have victory, yes. But then we have not conquered Kenya, so we don't have Kenya in our hands. So they will go back and be independent and they have their own president. And then uh, we, all we have is just a theory of what they call a victory. And that's what happens in most cases of uh, failing to obey God. You'll have victories, but you'll have empty victories because the actual things that you need to possess and have, you need to move in faith and mostly in obedience. God gives you specific instructions to own certain things in your life. That's why, for example, when you are looking for a job and God gives you one, God will not come and do work for you. He expects you to go and do work and maybe probably have income because you prayed and God has answered. So most of the things which you call, call for obedience, it is very important to know that uh, you have a part to play for you to own something or to conquer. 
and uh, have dominion over something. Another point that is very important uh, in that area of obedience, obedience does well outside crowds. If you want to make obedience a group matter, a family matter, most of the things that God will tell you will be individual. So for you to go out and look for a public opinion, you ask your sister, you ask your brother, well, ma, hey, maybe God, for example, you're dating someone and God tells you, I don't marry this one. And he's good dating you as an individual. Then you go and begin asking, well, my, my sister, how do you see this guy? Is he a bad guy? So you begin to look for public opinion from your friends. And of course, for them, they will tell you, hey, man, the guy is cool. You know, who, who can damn such a guy? Then you'll be satisfied that maybe the voice you had was from Satan. So you begin to bind and to cast out. And you are casting out the Holy Spirit. And when you reach in marriage after five years, you realize you had had God. But because, and God usually doesn't stop us when we disobey. He usually allows us to go ahead and uh, so to, sometimes we can come back or we just disappear forever if we don't repent well. That's why it is very important to understand that if you don't individualize the issue of obedience, unless God has spoken to a group, which is usually hard, because usually groups have all types of people. Provost can come and give us a word from the Lord as a cathedral. And then before she goes back to her office, even Reverend, some Reverend, or some clergy themselves are already saying, how did she hear God? Did she meet him in the corridor? Did she meet him where? You know, people begin to already disobey before they, you know, <laughs> they confirm with the Lord himself. So it is hard for a group to obey God. It is very, very complicated. So please, when God has given you a word or an instruction or a command, please, before you seek public opinion, first confirm that surely you are ready to walk with the Lord, whether anybody is willing to go with you or not. Then something else that is a very big obstacle to obedience is the what is called compromise. Compromise is a state where uh, halfway you are right, halfway you are wrong. Now, these are people who, for example, tells you, uh, I want you to read uh, maybe 10 chapters per day. Yeah, and maybe he says, you go and fast, take 10 days of prayer and fasting. Then when you reach on the day five, hey, you feel hunger is too much. Then you say, good. Ah, you also understand. Then you take a cup of juice, any plus a cup of bushera. By the time the day ends, you have spoiled the whole day. Now, God may not come back and strike you. God may not slap you. God may not abuse you. But surely that is what they call compromise. You will go ahead with the other days and finish, but you have compromised the standard of God. And so that's why it is half obedience is actually disobedience. Because God expects total obedience, doing something its fullness, not in halves, not in quarters. So when God has given you, don't say, but at least I have done halfway. Don't say, at least I've tried. Please do it fully. Oh, probably don't do it. But that's what they call obedience. You must do it to the full. The only other challenge I want us to read about in the book of Ezekiel chapter 3, and that's the commonest, especially in church circles. Ezekiel chapter 3, and then we shall go to the theme for tonight. I hope you guys are noting down some of these things because you may need them. When we are done with the overnight, when you're alone there, you will remember where you have failed to walk with God well in the area of obedience. Chapter 3 of Ezekiel, let me read from verse 7. It says, But the house of Israel will not listen to you, because they will not listen to me. For all the house of Israel are impudent and hard-hearted. Praise the Lord. Now, this is what I, I, some versions call stiff neck. Now, there are people who have made up their mind not to listen to any advice, not to listen to anybody. They don't take advice, they don't listen to anybody. And so even when God speaks, they have made up their mind not to obey. So there are people who are just hard. And if you are among them on this call, I pray that tonight, and this way it is usually with religious people, people who say, but for us who are born in this church, we are the ones who built it, we are the ones who donated the land for this church, we are the ones who first brought the first bricks or the first roof. You know, you, you, even your fathers were not yet born. And uh, it becomes a struggle. So when God is speaking in such a congregation, people begin to resist the move of the spirit of God. And it becomes a challenge at the level, because usually when a congregation uh, disobeys, 
God punishes the whole congregation. He doesn't punish individuals. He punishes the whole congregation. Because we see that in the, in the days of Israel, whenever the nation would sin, God would punish the whole nation would go into exile. Whether they are those who are righteous, because we see prophets all going into exile, apart from Jeremiah one time, who survived. But the rest of the prophets that we see in the Bible went to exile with the other people, meaning even you, the righteous, when the congregation disobeys, then you go down with it. So that's why we normally do a lot of intercession for our congregations because they are people who are stiff necked and hard, hard hearted, and they have made up their mind. Whatever you bring up and it is coming from the Lord, for them, they are ready to oppose and ready to fight. And if things become tough, they'd rather advocate for your transfer and then you go somewhere else. And that is the Lord in verse 9 that shall pick up the spirit of obedience. Praise the Lord. Help us later. Let's go to the book of Joshua. Joshua chapter 14. From verses uh, 6. Joshua chapter 14 from verse 6. I hope we are there. It says, Then the children of Judah came to Joshua in Gilgal, Caleb, the son of Jephna, Jephna, the Kenizah, said to him, the man of God, concerning you and me in Kadesh Barnea. I was 40 years old when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to spy out the land, and I brought back word to him as it was in my heart. Nevertheless, my brethren who went up with me made the heart of the people melt. But I wholly followed the Lord because I wholly followed the Lord my God. And now behold, the Lord has kept me alive, as he said, these 45 years, ever since the Lord spoke this word. Moses, while Israel wandered in the wilderness. And now, here I am this day, 85 years old. As yet, I am as strong this day as the day that Moses sent me. Just as my strength was then, so now is my strength for war, both for going out and for coming in. Now, therefore, give me this mountain of which the Lord spoke in that day, for you heard in that day how the Anakim were there, and that the cities were great and fortified. It may be that the Lord will be with me, and I shall be able to drive them out, as the Lord said. And Joshua blessed him and gave Hebron to Caleb, the son of Jephna, as an inheritance. Hebron therefore became the inheritance of Caleb, the son of Jephna, the Kenizzite, to this day, because he wholly followed the Lord God of Israel. And the name of Hebron formerly was Kariath Abba. Abba was the greatest man among the Anakim. Then the land had rest. Oh, praise the Lord. Now, this text is very interesting. Of course, it's a, we are seeing the man who is speaking words, uh, who is repeating a statement or a story that happened 45 years back. Now, I don't know how many of us can wait on God for 45 years for something he promised. Because I'm sure there are many people here who have already started grumbling and saying, why did I even get saved? Because for the last five years, things have not worked. Or for the last one year even. Probably some of you have been praying over an item for five years, two years, and you have not had an answer. But this man was patient enough to wait for 45 years until... Uh, time came and he had to inherit the land. Now, before let's look at its history back a little in Numbers chapter 14. Numbers chapter 14, let's check there a little and we we'll see the history of this uh, scripture so that we can get the context and then move on. Now, we we'll just jump to the main verses. Uh, let's go to Numbers chapter 14. From verse, uh, from verse 6, Numbers chapter 14, verse 6 says, But Joshua the son of Nun and Caleb, 
the son of Jephna, who were among those who had spied out the land tore their clothes. Let me go back a little up. So all the congregation, that's chapter 14, verse 1, all the congregation, now the history is, in chapter 13, Moses sent out 10 people of people uh, to go and spy out the land that God wanted to give the children of Israel. Because remember, we're talking about the obedience, the key to conquer. So they had a promised land, which they had to conquer, they had to win it, and they didn't take over from those who were staying there. And that's what we call conquering. You go, you fight, and then you take over what is yours, what has been promised to you. That's why God says, it, it, that's why we call it obedience, the key to conquer. So meaning when God has promised you something, some things, they require you to go and fight for them, and then remove those who are holding them, and then take over those items. And those are the many things, by the way. That's why we are struggling uh, as Christians. Most Christians, especially in the marketplace, have, re- have discovered and have come to understand, especially those who do business, uh, physical business, trade. Uh, because the number one in most of the shops, if you go around to and so on, and you make your simple research, you'll find that most of the shop owners, they have the use out of witchcraft. They take titles to, sell to shrines. Others, maybe like Indians and Chinese, they have their dragons and their gods. Every morning they offer sacrifice, they burn incense, they burn candles. And our uh, Christians, they just go and open a shop in the same neighborhood. They don't even pray over the shop. Maybe the best they can do is to pray when they are opening it. And they will never pray again. But if it's a Muslim owning a shop, you pray in the morning, he closes and prays, he prays in the afternoon and so on and so forth. And you find that our Christians do not uh, deal with the issue of conquering. They don't know how to conquer because they have not been told to wars and obedience. Because most of the instructions that will help you to conquer in some of those places, maybe talk about those of you in government offices. Most of the challenges you suffer or you face is because you have not learned obedience. Because if God taught you how to walk with him, if you walked in obedience, most of the cases, if you hear God well, he would give you instructions. Let me give an example of some of, some of those cases. You find maybe there is a cleaner who is the one watching the gates of the company or the offices. The cleaner comes maybe every morning at six and does all types of witchcraft. And whoever comes after that is soaked in the same anointing. Now, if you're praying and seriously having a, a functional altar in your office, some of those things, God can reveal them to you and he gives you an instruction on what to do. So through obedience, you go and conquer the person. The person's order has become nothing. And before you need all the slaves, they are taken over. They are released. People begin to smile again. Marriage is getting in order because there's a company I know of where they had uh, six miscarriages in one company in less than a month. All women in that month who are giving birth, all of them had miscarriages. Until my friend who was praying, God showed him that their boss, their CEO, was sacrificing those kids. Until now, the CEO was disarmed in a prayer even the company closed and left the place. So the point I'm talking about is that when you understand some of these principles that Joshua and Caleb understood, then surely obedience will become easy and you will conquer territories. You will no longer live as a civilian. You will begin to live as a soldier of Christ who obeys his master without questioning and that will lead to conquering, not just victory. So when you go to Numbers chapter 14, it says, so all the congregation lifted up their voice after they had come back from spying the land. Uh, they came and gave a report on how they saw giants that people, and it was true. The guys who were there were, I don't know how many meters tall, but they were really, really abnormal people. And when so to them in their eyes, they looked like, I can imagine they looked like grasshoppers and it was a true description. They were not lying, but... What they missed is what we are going to talk about tonight, about Caleb. So all the congregation lifted up their voices and cried. So when they came and gave a report in front of everybody, people feared to go and possess the land. And they began to cry to Moses, and uh, they complained to Moses and Aaron in verse 2, and the whole congregation said to them, if only we had died in the land of Egypt, or if only we had died in the wilderness. Now that's where most of us sometimes get to. Have you ever been to a place where you wish? Either you never got saved or you, you just died after salvation where you don't want to face what you're facing because it's too hard for you to bear, uh, especially where there is no faith. And you begin to complain to the provost. 
you complain to the system, you begin to see them as your problem because these guys were seeing most and Aaron as the problem. As some people probably are seeing the provost and assistant provost, maybe a bishop as a problem. And I pray that the Lord will help you tonight to repent if you have been complaining against God's leaders. And they said, why has the Lord brought us to this land to fall by the sword that our wives and children would become victims? Would it not be better for us to return to Egypt? Now they began thinking of going back. And I know they are have fallen back out of salvation because they believe God has failed to work. At least I know one person who says I, they would no longer want to pray. They don't want to know the things of God anymore, simply because they believe God abandoned them. So the people have just left salvation and have chosen to go back into the world because they believe God doesn't work for them. So they said to one another, let us select the leader and return to Egypt. I hope none of you has ever been in a meeting where they select a leader to dethrone another leader. If you have been in that meeting tonight, I pray that you repent and never get involved again. So these guys were having their council meetings. Their leaders started having meetings. So yeah, let us get another leader, Moses and Aaron, let us leave them for them. They don't know what they want. So I pray that if you have been in such kind of groups and meetings, may the Lord deliver you tonight from secret wicked meetings of selecting wicked leaders. And then Moses and Aaron fell on their faces. May the Lord give grace. Our provost, especially and the assistant provost and the entire team to keep on praying for the congregation because surely we need prayers. They cried before the Lord, and uh, but Joshua, the son of Nun, verse 6, and Caleb, the son of Jephna, who were among those who had spied out the land toward their clothes. Now, these are guys who had gone with the rest of the team to know that they, for them they stayed behind, they didn't know what had happened to the other side, to know that they were acting presumptuously. These guys had seen the giants also. But for them, when they came back, they said, no, you guys, we can't surely refuse to go and take that land. And they said, and they spoke to the whole congregation of the children of Israel saying, the land we pass through to spy out is an exceedingly good land. Now you begin to hear the attitude of a person who obeys God. You see, when you meet someone who has, who has a disobedient spirit, one always they are negative about what the word of God. When God says this, they begin to question, but, but what if? What if it is not God? What if you have heard wrongly? They can't have any positive attitude towards the word of God. Maybe when you squeeze them, they say, but that is Old Testament. May the Lord deliver you tonight if you're that category who is among the 10 spies. So I pray that tonight you choose which side you belong to. Either you become among the two, Joshua and Caleb, or you become among the 10 spies who always have a bad report over something that God has said or he has done. So they begin to say that the, the land is good. The land is nice. Why don't we go and de- take it back? And then, if the Lord delights in us, now they begin to bring in God. They say, then he will bring us into this land and give it to us, a land which flows with milk and honey. Now, the other guy is so giant and the uh, sons of anarchy. These guys saw milk and honey. May the Lord give you a different eye from your peers. May the Lord give you a different view of things from your family members. That while for them they are locked up, they are confused, they are running up and down. For you are at peace. You are at rest because you're seeing what God is seeing. May the Lord help us tonight. Because God had also called it the land of milk and honey. So the guys, as they reached in the land, Joshua and Caleb, they said, no, they didn't want to focus on the giants. They focused on the fact that for them, they were seeing milk and honey. And may the Lord give you grace to see things the way he sees them. And that's what will make a difference in your life. Uh, Only do not rebel against the Lord, nor fear the people of the land, for they are our bread. Now, you can imagine here the words of Caleb and Joshua. They are saying, these guys you think are giants. They are only bread for us. We shall just kill them as if we are killing mosquitoes. They are just bread. They are nothing. They are not even people. We shouldn't, you know, even accord them the, the respect of human beings. These are just bread. We shall just finish them in microseconds. Can you imagine the view of these guys and how they viewed uh, the giants? They said their protection has departed from them. And the Lord is with us. Do not fear them. Now, I believe this Caleb and Joshua had quietly observed how God was working things out. What I called progressive obedience. From Egypt up to this point, these guys were convinced 
there is nothing God cannot do. You, you know, Paul says, I'm persuaded that I am persuaded. I pray that tonight you will get convinced and persuaded that there is nothing God will tell you to do that he cannot handle. Because that is the biggest challenge we have. You, if God gives you an instruction and you begin to think, ah, but will this one be possible? Will the money be enough? God tells you maybe you're going, for, you're going to have a wedding and God tells you, uh, um, have 1,000 people. Or you're planning for 300. Maybe you're going to even have them at Serena or Serena or wherever. And uh, you begin to calculate per plate. You, be you begin to go into mathematics. You look for all types of calculators because the one on your phone may not be enough. And uh, you go, you know, Moses left Egypt without any single budget. And that's one of the things that have hindered us from, from progressing as a church for many years. Well, budget is good, but it shouldn't be the main issue. The main issue should be the Holy Spirit leading. But Moses left Egypt without knowing where they would get firewood in the desert, where they would get food to eat, sauce to drink, you know, to take. But by faith, these guys walked. So Joshua and Caleb are exhibiting the same anointing and the same spirit. And they are saying, no. This God who has done all these things will surely make a difference in this matter. And after they have said that, and all the congregation uh, said to stone them with the stones. And uh, of course, they, they, they began planning now to kill Joshua and Caleb. And that's where God intervened. Now, let us to jump to verse where we see where Caleb picks his, uh, his word. Let's go to verse, verse 20. Uh, it says, Then the Lord said, I have pardoned according to this was after Moses' intercession. Then the Lord said, I have pardoned according to your word. But truly as I live, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord, because all these men who have seen my glory and signs, which I did in Egypt and in the wilderness, and have put me to the test. Now these ten times and have not heeded my voice, the same issue of hearing God's voice, they certainly shall not see the land of which I saw to their fathers, nor shall any of these or those who rejected me can see. Now, this is where judgment usually takes place. Uh, when we disobey God, at some point, when we keep disobeying and disobeying and disobeying, at some point, because whatever tells us to obey is usually for our good, there is nothing, there's no instruction God will give us that is for him. Because usually when it is for him, his work, he usually does it by himself. So when God gives you a command or an instruction or an order, usually it is for you to gain certain inheritance on this earth. So when you keep refusing and refusing, sometimes at some point, God releases judgment. I'm going to give an example of King Saul. King Saul didn't completely refuse to obey God, but he compromised. He went and did the work halfway. And when he was asked, he said, I've brought this sheep. It was ordered to kill all the Amalekites and their things. And he spared their king and their animals, the fat animals. And he said, I've brought these ones to sacrifice them to my God. So of course, probably that would, that sounded like a good reason for him. But we don't know whether in the heart it was true. But the point is that that's when he was rejected from being a king after two years of being in power. He ruled for the next 38 years as a rejected king until he reached 40 years in power. Now, that's why it is very important for you to understand that as you, you go somewhere, some things we take for granted because we think the grace or the blood of Jesus when the new covenant, the things just like that. But there is a point where God will just depart and he will stop speaking to you and you will know he will stop giving instructions because all the instructions he gives you, you either compromise, you do them halfway or you disobey them. That's why when you don't hear God's instructions for a long time, better get worried, especially if you used to hear him instructing you on things, even small things telling where to pass, telling where to go, telling you maybe today don't go to work. Uh, so if you don't get God's instructions for some long time, better get worried and see where you disobeyed or where you walked off track. And uh, that's why now he adds verse 24, where Caleb picks up his word, he says, but my servant Caleb, because he has a different spirit in him and has followed me fully, I will bring into the land where he went and his descendants shall inherit. Now, uh, praise the Lord. Now, this is something I want us to really rejoice about because it seems when the crowd is sinning, 
for God is watching individuals, not the whole crowd. So meaning the uh, on a good day like this one, a crowd can go down and God chooses to save you alone. Because we only see that two people reach the promised land, two people, because there are some people argue that uh, the oldest Testament never used to talk about women, but we see Miriam being talked about, we see Esther, we see Deborah. So here they don't say that the Caleb and Joshua reached with their wives, but they reached with their children, meaning they had wives at this time. But then when they reached the promised land, there were only two people who reached. And uh, that is Joshua and Caleb. So most likely, if this is my thinking, that even their wives did not agree with them. That's why it is about of obedience. Please, friends, especially couples, Abraham went through the same. Abraham was told to go and sacrifice his son. I am just imagining if he had told Sarah, he would have two dead bodies in the house. He would have killed him first. She would have killed Abraham first, and then she kills herself probably. Because there is no way I've suffered for 90 years. I'd even advised wicked men of you getting a son. And then all of a sudden you think that God has told you that you want to sacrifice him. So I believe Abraham went quietly and they did the work. And he only came back with the story after so many years. I think they didn't even tell Sarah that straight away. Praise the Lord. So there are things you need a lot of wisdom when you're dealing with obedience. Because even Job's wife at some point, really, he also left, left him. So please don't rely on people when you're dealing with God and obedience. I'm not saying don't, especially those of you who are married, I'm not saying that don't share certain ideas when God gives you instructions. The instructions for sharing, the instructions for just obey. So when God gives you an instruction, please, especially married people, I am also married, please, please and please be wise enough to know what to share, even what for sharing, know when to share it. You may bring it out on a bad day and the woman will oppose the idea and you will struggle, especially maybe if God is calling you for a full-time show, he's telling you to resign from your job. Maybe there is a danger he has seen at your workplace. Maybe he wants to judge the company or the, 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 the thing you work in and uh, he's telling you to leave early before judgment comes. But maybe he doesn't give you the details, but he has told you to resign. It has been earning. Maybe your wife doesn't even work. So God tells you to resign and you come home and tell him, Madam, today I have resigned. Oh, I'm going to resign tomorrow because God has told me. You may have a divorce the next few days if you're not careful. That's why it is very important to know when to share if you're sharing with someone that you must share with. Please pray over it and fast over some of those instructions God gives you, especially if they concern both of you as a couple and it has been given to you as a man, as a head of a family. It has been given to you as a, also as a wife. Maybe you may be having an unsaved husband. And God really maybe speaks to you or through you for a family to grow. And so please be wise enough. Don't just come and begin bragging around your husband. For me, God has told me so. I no longer want to obey you. You may get beaten and just out of the house. So please learn a lot of wisdom and know when to share and who to share with at, at what time. And then you will enjoy salvation. Praise the Lord. So when you go back to the book of Joshua where we were, as we wind up, I wanted us to pick that background. Joshua begins to remind, uh, Caleb is the person I wanted us to focus on. Caleb began to remind his friend, Joshua probably, it was 45 years ago. Maybe he had also forgotten about the whole idea of uh, taking over the land. But Caleb reminded him and says, no, God spoke me 45 years ago, which we have seen behind in the book of Numbers. And he said, no, you'll take over this land. I'll give you the land where you stepped. Now, Caleb, I don't think in his power, physical power, he had the capacity to contend with giants. But by faith, and because he had had God well to go out and spy the land, he knew it was God's mission, he went in full faith that God was with him. So when he came now to conquer the land, he went for the land which had the biggest obstacles, the giants. That is what he went for at 85. I don't know how many of you on call are 85 plus, but I believe uh, some of you, most of you, most of us are quite, uh, we still have, we, still, we can still redeem certain things where we have been, especially when we need disobedience. There are areas which God spoke to us maybe five years ago, two years ago, one year ago, and we have kept walking in the other direction and they have hindered us from progressing. Let me give an example. God may tell you to leave your workplace Maybe in his economy, he wants to give you enough time maybe for prayer as he transitions you into another job. But because of lack of faith or faithlessness, 
you say, uh -uh, now I have agreed to obey God. But let me first look for another job somewhere. When I get it, then I will leave. So you begin to apply everywhere. And God keeps frustrating you until you obey. What he needs is not you applying. He doesn't need your wisdom. He doesn't need your head. All he needs is your obedience. So when sometimes you obey, or most after all the times when you obey, then you see God is under. That's why it's very important to pray. That I pray that as you go through this night, in the next one hours, we pray. May the Lord bring back to your remembrance areas where you've been working in direct disobedience or indirect. And may the Holy Spirit begin to prompt you to a place of repentance and do the right thing. That is why in order for us to conquer like Caleb, to conquer these places, powerful things, we must come to a place where we choose to agree with God and say, Lord, you are right. Even this matter can be resolved. That's why I usually say that faith has no deadline. My friend was told to double his tithe. God told him to double his tithe. Now, I know most of you, if you are told such a statement, you would say that is Satan. That is a devourer. And you begin to cancel the spirit of a devourer. You begin to cancel the spirit of poverty. You know. But God can give such an instruction. Others are giving 10% for you, giving 20%. And that is from the Lord. So may the Lord begin to bring us to a place of remembrance where we have walked away from the instructions he gave us. Some of you maybe were married, who are old, maybe 50, 60, or 40. God gave you instructions when you were girls, when you were in high school, when you were at university, and you have swayed off because of the systems of this world. But there are some things you will remember tonight and get back on track, because probably I believe there is still a chance. That's why God has given us such a topic tonight. May the Lord give us a different spirit tonight, because I think that Caleb and Joshua had a different spirit. They were not like other people. Where others were complaining, these guys were saying, no, we can conquer. So you don't have the same mindset as your peers, as your friends, where others are crying. People were stalking supermarkets in their homes during COVID because they thought we are going to be locked for like 20 years or 10 years. And behold, we didn't even spend two years. And the markets were open all through. So may the Lord bring you to that place where he will be Lord in every matter, where you will trust him for every big thing as you have trusted him for small things. So that when he gives an impossible instruction, what would be impossible in the eyes of man? Please carry on as an individual and trust him where he needs the support, where some, some projects, some instructions really need the other people to support you. To ask him which partners can I work with, maybe for prayer support, for intercession, so that you are able to obey God in every way. May the good Lord bless us. Let us pray again. Our God and our Father, we thank you for your word that has come tonight. I pray that, Lord, as we meditate, as we, we pray, as we listen from you, begin to bring it to our remembrance. The things which we have walked in disobedience about. Things we have left behind because of fear. Things we have disobeyed about because of compromise. Where we feared what people would say. Where we feared what the world would think. Lord, I pray that you begin to help us tonight to align with your will for our unconquered territories so that we are able to conquer by obedience. In the name of Jesus, lead us to a place, of oh God, where we will surely obey you in every way and cause us to hearken unto your voice diligently that surely the blessings you promised may come upon us and our descendants forever and ever. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Back to you, Amen. 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 Thank you, thank you, thank you, Gilbert. I mm. hope, friends, you've yeah. seen where you have been disobedient. Begin to check yourself where you have been disobedient and why you're not conquering a territory. And um, remind yourself that you need to be a soldier of Christ. We are soldiers and soldiers obey. And um, when to share, how to share, and with whom. 
because some of the things they are destined dream dream killers. There are so many among us within ourselves, then you get destiny killers. So it's important to know whom you share with instruction from the Lord, especially instruction from the Lord. People just despise instructions. So I would want to call, let us first receive this word before I call grace to respond in prayer. Our God and our Father, thank you for Gilbert. Thank you for Esther. Thank you for that daughter. Thank you for his ministry among Esther. I pray you bless him, refill him where he has uploaded to us and where your name, O oh Lord, has been glorified. May you take the glory. Lord, as he has taught us, we pray that, Lord, we shall be able to receive this word, to receive the rebuke. We know that in this teaching, there's been an apostolic whip. We pray that, Lord, we shall remind ourselves that, yes, that stick has helped me to know how to deal with my children, how to deal with my bosses at work, how to obey, even at difficult situations. So we ask that you bless Gilbert, bless the works of his son. And so Lord, as he does ministry, we thank you and we worship you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, Grace, are you still online? Yes, I am. Uh, present. Please take on the prayer responses. Hallelujah. We give glory to God for the great message that Tashawi has shared with us. And uh, such a whip, like Alan says, um, when you think about this, um, you know, the, the, the rules and the, the conditions of the army, you know, work in such a way that you don't ask. And as Christians, even as humans, uh, we have a tendency to ask, you know, we have a tendency to question, a tendency to judge. But we've been challenged to say, if you've been told, go on mission, hey, you grab your gun, grab your little tiny mattress and your rucksack and get fighting. There are elements in the journey of salvation, the journey of, create, of, 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 of obedience that we cannot go on questioning Christ. And I mean, this message is coming so clearly uh, and, and that we shall need to obey properly for us to be able to conquer. We've learned that conquering is not just saying, okay, I go and fight and come back. No, it requires possession. It, it, it means possession. You take over that which the Lord promised. So, uh, that in some instances we go over, fight and come back and we forget, forget as to why we actually went. So that our battles may not stop in the middle, our prayers shall be that we'll be able to conquer. So let's pray our Savior, our King, we give you glory. We give you honor because you alone deserves it and nobody else. Thank you for being the ultimate good, good Father. It's who you are. It's who you are. There's no one like you. Father, thank you for teaching us. Thank you for being a source of rebuke. Thank you for being a source of worship, King of Kings. Thank you for being a source of everything that we can ever yearn and imagine of King of Kings. Thank you for being there for us, King of Kings, when the earth would have swallowed us, Father. When we feared that, when others feared giants, when others feared uh, all the thorns and the bushes and whatever looked around the promise that you have given, thank you for showing us and giving us the wisdom that, hey, may you focus and focus but on the land and not the things which surround it. Yes, in this land was milk and honey. King of kings, we pray that we'll be able to focus on the goal for which you've intended us to conquer in our lives, Father, even in the days 
in the assignments that you give us in the workplaces, in the businesses. King of Kings, help us to focus on what you have given us as an assignment. I give you glory for the preacher. I ask that you fill him. I ask that you make him stronger together with the family. I pray that you bless him for offering himself to be used. In Jesus' name I pray. Yeah. So um, uh, we, we've learned properly that uh, obedience requires hearing and hearing very well. We were taught that if we diligently observe the commands God has given us, then he will give us the grace to hear very well. So we pray, King of Kings, that you give us the grace, my Lord and Savior. I pray in the name of Jesus that where we have not been able to tap into this grace that you so unmeritedly gave it to us, O King of Kings, we'll be able to come through. I pray in the name of Jesus that you open the ears of our hearts that we may listen into the instruction. And as we listen to that instruction, Father, even if it does not make sense, even if it seems uphill, even if it seems impossible, you alone are the God of impossibilities, King of Kings, Father. You alone could take a man to the cross and down to the grave and bring him back, King of Kings. We have seen that this grace which surpasses all our understanding will help us understand and hear perfectly what your voice is, O Lord and Savior. Father, we've learned that we need to have faith. And in this faith, we must trust God even when it doesn't make sense. When the command given seems impossible, we ask that you, God, will give us the faith to enable us to activate our faith, King of Kings. Faith is that ability, Father, to listen into the substance of things and sin, O Lord and Savior. We learned that as this went to spy over the land, King of Kings, the ten only focused on that which was, you know, impossible in the sight of men. King of Kings, show us that in your sight, in your faith, O oh Lord and Savior, everything is possible. Father, as we focus, King of Kings, show us the actual precision, O oh Lord and Savior, of the targets and the things you've made us to achieve on earth, King of Kings. Father, no matter the circumstance, I pray in the name of Jesus, O oh Lord, that our faith will not be stumbled in any way or another. King of Kings, may be glorified in every circumstance. Father, no matter the problems we are having with a relationship with you, whether confusion, whether anger and frustration, we know this could lead us away from you and what you want for us. We know that this, we may ignore the call and the path that you have made us to take, and we almost at times get into fear, and this fear takes over our beliefs. King of Kings, in order to turn away from these negative emotions, we pray that we'll be able to understand exactly how you feel about us, and this can be done in the faith that you gave for us, O King of Kings. I pray that as each of us comes to a point in our lives where we dare to ask you to reveal your will for us, Father, you would put us in a place where acceptance of what you reveal to us is what you purpose for us, O Lord and Savior. Even when it may not be what we want, but it will still surely be what we need in order to live a fully invested life in you, King of Kings, Father. Separate us from all sorts of wickedness that make us and able to listen to your word that make us think about the worries of this world. Yes, like the other 10 thought about giants and the journey and the uphills and the downhills. Father, I ask that you make us focus. Help us to realize that anything you bring into our lives and anything you reveal to us is for our own good. Yes, Lord, give us the spirit of acceptance and their heart to open to your movement in our lives, Father, because we know when your movement is open in our lives, we shall approach all sorts of circumstances without fear, without any favor, God. Allow us to let your love, yes, your love, that love which caused you to come from heaven and die on the cross. Allow us, O King of Kings, to let your love surround us and cast out any fear or doubts, because we've, we've learned that in this, obedience becomes a distance to us, O King of Kings. Help us to live in this love with you and accept your will for our lives, and give us the proper response, my Lord and Savior, to be able to tap into the revelation of the goodness that you have passed for us. Yes, you promised that this land is ours, I pray. In the name of Jesus, like Josh, I can, we'll be able to partake of the goodness of this land flowing with milk and honey. 
may we trust in the way of the cross. May we trust in the way you push us to go. May you trust in the way you purpose that nobody else will stumble our walk. King of kings, I pray that you give us a humble heart. Yes, the preacher was talking about humility. He's talking about um, being able to uh, focus and not having compromise. Because we learned that compromise is the biggest tangent to obedience. May compromise be away from us because in the place of compromise, we do not have fullness of, of heart. We do not have fullness of journey in following what the instruction of the Lord is. He gave an example of saying, I'm going to fast for 10 days and on the fifth day you desire, you desire to eat. Father, I pray we shall not be of compromise. Give us a humble heart and a strong heart to, to yield through. My Lord and Savior, help us to obey you and let us be flexible to the Holy Spirit's guidance whenever he tells us what to do. Father, let us follow when you lead. King of kings, where you've placed other leaders in front of you, where we've trusted in our own self, where we've trusted in our monies, in our properties. Oh, Lord and Savior, have mercy on us. Where we've trusted in our own being, in our knowledge. Yes, we have degrees, we have masters, we have doctorates. We own things, O oh King of Kings. We have leadership. We are leaders. We are bosses everywhere. We are sorry where we have used our offices, my Lord and Savior. Have mercy, have pity on us, O oh King of Kings. Have mercy on us where we've taken our own God, O oh King of Kings, where you're supposed to be the lead father. Teach us how to follow when you lead, King of Kings. I pray in the name of Jesus that we shall only desire what you desire for all of us, O Lord and Savior. Father, may you be seen in everything that we do and in everything that we say. King of Kings, Father, when others see us, they will see you. When others hear our testimonies, they will hear the goodness of your work in us, O Lord and Savior. I pray in the name of Jesus, O Oh Lord, that as the preacher was talking, we, we, we will not waver in strength. And this is the strength to obey, that we shall progress in the journey of obedience. In the small things lies a test. The preacher says in the small things lies a test of our obedience. That if we can obey in the small things, then the Lord is going to give us, uh, he's going to have trust, he's going to open up gates, even for the bigger assignments, even for the bigger things that he has given as a promise. King of Kings, I pray that you give us the strength to obey, even when we feel weary. Yes, it's on the 40, on the 39th day in the prayer and fasting, and you feel like you can't go on. Today I was chatting with a sister, and you know, she was t telling me how an she felt an ulcer, but she was willing to move. King of Kings, I pray that you will give us the strength Yes, you give us the courage, you give us the zeal to push through this fasting of King of Kings, to push through all the scores of life for which you've passed for us, my Lord and Savior. I pray that where our strength is wavering, you will come through with energy for us, O King of Kings. I give you glory because you always do this. Father, we realize that uh, you perform great wonders in our lives and with anyone who faithfully serves you and who faithfully obeys your instructions. Therefore, we want to obey you and maintain a good relationship with you. Please help us to shine every form of ungodliness in the mighty name of Jesus so that we can meet you and enjoy you deeply. Father, teach us how to love and to serve you well. And Father, let us qualify to receive these undaunted blessings like you did for Joshua on the earth and in heaven, Father. We pray that there will not be any sort of disturbance any sort of ungodliness, any sort of disruption on this journey of obedience. King of Kings, we ask that you even forgive us where we wavered. Yes, where we wavered in this particular strength. I ask that you make us one in unison with you that we may be able to complete this journey. Father, that we may not be lost like the other 10 who lost their focus, but we'll be able to stay on course with you. King of Kings, we learned. Uh, through a question that how long can you wait on the Lord? The preacher asked, how, can, how long can you wait on the Lord? Uh, we, we see uh, just at 85 years, having waited for 45 years, the promise was made when he was 40. 
and certainly of course your question i doubt there's anyone here who is 85 years or for lack of doubt who is close to that but the journey no matter how long it is the lesson i learned from here is that the lord is the lord is purging us and teaching us to be patient the lord is preparing us on this journey because he knows we are not just going to win the battle we're not just going to get victory but we are going to conquer so the lord will teach us how to conquer in the eyes of the giant we may look like millipedes and if we choose to focus on that particular element then we'll actually be millipedes and there will not be any form of conquering actually when you go out into the land like that uh, bear will be devoured by these giants he also said that when things or circumstances seem impossible we will not complain or lose hope in the promise of god why because it does not matter the time the lord god will always come through at the point he also required that we should wear a positive attitude yes we should have a positive attitude the land was exceedingly good despite the face of giants so no doubt what was promised of this land is milk and honey and what was seen and observed was that but um among the observations was other things like the giants <laughs> so uh where do you choose to put your focus what do you choose to lie on so he says amidst the circumstances in the promises of god let's choose to be on the positive side do you see the giants or you see the milk and honey that was the question obedience requires us to focus and focus on only god jehovah i pray in the name of jesus that you do, should, will not provoke you to receive punishments because of not waiting on you i ask that you teach us how to be like your servant who waited on you 45 years father he did not tarry in listening he did not tarry in waiting he did not tarry in observing he did not tarry in listening to the voice of the holy spirit oh how i pray in the name of jesus that we shall all focus on this your grace in the name of jesus how i pray that you separate us from all sorts of voices from all sorts of iniquities from all sorts of ideas from all sorts of disruptions in the name of jesus i pray that we shall only focus on you and nothing else we shall only focus on you in this 45 years of lord and savior no matter what opinion comes from those we live with no matter what opinions come from those who we share with every day yes if there be our children if there be our husbands and wives if there be anybody else or king of kings father we pray that you teach us how to seek you in the secret yes we are praying and fasting i ask that you teach us how to seek you in the secret and the preacher hinted on his king of kings that in an individual way how are we relating with you king of kings father yes there's a public opinion but when we go back to our prayer prayer closet so lord and savior what voice do we choose to hearken i pray in the name of jesus that we shall hearken the voice of the lord otherwise we will not be able to see the land king of kings i pray that you continue to separate us from all these disruptions which make us uh, fail which make us wonder oh it's been 10 years it's been 15 years it's been 20 years it's been 40 years yes lord i pray that we shall wait on for the trophy we shall wait on not just for the victory king of kings but also for the conquering of the land as he promised yes and the wife that we will not disobey your commands shade bokosi tamako father i am sorry where we have not obeyed your commands in the name of jesus i'm sorry where we have only gotten lost in our hogs in our own uh, thoughts father in our own plans and forgotten that we need to focus on you i pray in the name of jesus that you forgive us we need to listen to you in distinction father only two people step in the promised land it's not that the others we are not meant to enjoy the land but because of sheer disobedience we notice that they fail on this may the lord give us the grace to listen in to his instructions as individuals that we may like the two be able to put and set foot on the land that was promised 
King of Kings, we learn today that it does not matter the period we have been in waiting. It does not matter, but only to exercise utmost faith in light of the heavy instructions we may be receiving. King of Kings, I pray that you will teach us remembrance in the name of Jesus. You teach us remembrance. Heavenly Father, please make us obedient children and we shall remember all the good things you've taken us through. Let us listen and obey your instructions. Give us the ability to do whatever you ask us to do. Do not let us provoke your judgment with disobedience in the name of Jesus, but cause us to have humility. Enable us to be always conscious. Yes, conscious of your word, conscious of your small, still voice, conscious of your promises, conscious of your promises, of your prophecies in our lives. King of kings, enable us to be conscious. Only then we may see the things that you've promised us and that you may judge us properly, King of kings, Father. Because if our conscience is corrupted, then we will not be able to see the goodness of the land. My Lord and Savior, you who is mighty and awesome, who observes what our heart's desires are, I pray in the name of Jesus that you will listen to our prayer tonight. Father God, you're the only true God. Hallelujah. The only God that we have been taught about. You who condescends the love of people as a father. I pray in the name of Jesus that your love would be like a multitude to us. Help us, oh God, to be obedient children. To help us to cast out all our hearts and minds. All things that might hinder us. Father, we cast them away. In the name of Jesus, we thank you for giving yourself to us. We are not of this world system, but have heaven inheritance, like we've seen with Joshua. Help us to focus on this heaven inheritance. This is reserved only for us, O King of Kings, as Christians, that will be able to set our sight. Help us to take every thought captive and surrender our hearts and life to you in true obedience and humility. May we who are your children be drawn closer to each other, O oh God. And as you do, good work in our lives. Yes, close us to be bound together as Christians, as a fellowship. I pray that we stay in one accord with you. Build us up in spiritual house, O oh King of Kings, I pray. Where Christ is our cornerstone. Yes, where you have been seen. And may your indwelling who is your Holy Spirit, the King of Kings, in our hearts, prompt us and guide us and encourage us and train us not to believe in anything else but to obey only in your commands. I surrender, King of Kings, all to you. Like the song says, everything I surrender all to you and pray that we may walk in the newness of love and humble obedience in all the days of our lives. My Lord and Savior, we want to live in, we want to live godly in Christ Jesus and ask that you would help us to do develop an attitude of obedience and you according to your will and nobody else but you help us to grow in grace and to develop in the right godly practice and this scripture has been so clear about the goodness that will come through if we worship you and if we obey you may we learn to praise you without ceasing and to develop attitude of prayerfulness yes king of kings where we've not had prayer a prayerful life, I ask in the name of Jesus that you help us to be obedient because only then do you speak to us in the place of prayer. In the place of reading the word is when you speak to us. King of kings, we are sorry when we are so lost in the works, in the businesses, and we forget to have time for you. I ask that you cause an obedience on this side also, my Lord and Savior, that we may be able to increase in wisdom and stature because we are in your word. Thank you, O oh God that you are a savior. Thank you, Father, for your word of truth. And thank you, O Lord, that you desire to transform all of us, your children, into the image of likeness of of Jesus Christ. As we depend on only you, Father, I want to live a godly life. Yes, we want to live godly lives and live in humility of heart and in obedience. Lord, the eyes of our hearts are on you and our confidence is in your word. So I ask that that you inspire us in this word, you convict us in this word, you teach us in this word. 
give us rebuke, give us correction, because only then can we understand. Through your scriptures, O King of Kings, we may be able to develop a teachable and a correctable spirit. And in this, O King of Kings, we shall learn submission. We shall learn heeding and leading of the Holy Spirit. Help us to look into the mirror each day. Yes, and this mirror is the mirror of your word. And let us search in that word the areas in us that need to be rooted out, the areas in us that are causing us to be disobedient. Father, if it be family, if it be work, if it be our way of life, our character, the way we speak, the way we act, cause us to grow in, 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 in humble obedience to your ways and help us to reflect on the love of the Lord Jesus Christ. My Lord, I ask that you, you help us in this path of obedience, in the path of righteousness, where you'd rather have us go in the name of Jesus. I pray that we will not live by the worldly might, but by the word that you provide in your word, King of Kings. But by the word that comes by the power of your Holy Spirit, so help us, I pray, to stand against the evil tactics of the enemy and to withstand his fury darts and all his satanic strategies, O oh Lord and Savior. King of kings, endure us with the spiritual wisdom to fight the fight of faith in our lives. King of kings, I pray that we shall only look to you. We shall look to you. We shall trust in you, Jesus. We shall trust in everything that you promised. King of kings, I pray that compromise will be far from us, that faith will be our portion, and that strength to obey you will be everything that we desire. King of Kings, we read from the psalmist that you have increased the trouble in us when we have disobeyed. When people have woken up against us, King of Kings, we have tried to use our own wisdom. Many are they who say of us, there is no help for him in God. King of kings, we will not heed this in the name of Jesus. <clears throat> Your word says, but you, O Lord, are the shield for me, my glory, and the one who lifts me up. I cried the Lord with my voice, and he heard me from his holy hill. I lay down and slept. I awoke for the Lord sustained me. I will not be afraid of I will not be afraid of ten thousands of people who have set themselves against me. Yes. Like those giants, king of kings, we choose to be like the psalmist, we will not be afraid in any way in the name of Jesus. We, shall, we have learned how to approach them with word. We have learned how to approach them with the Holy Spirit, king of kings. We ask that we shall be filled with your word, with your Holy Ghost, that whenever we approach this, we are able to come through in the name of Jesus. We give you glory, O oh Lord, because you arise in our lives and you save us, for you have struck our enemies on the cheekbone, you have broken the teeth of the ungodly. Yes, salvation belongs to your God. Your blessing is upon you, people. Be magnified, my Lord. Be glorified, my Savior. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen, amen, amen.